All right, so. Um, ah! All right. <laughs> I don't like to share my fame with anyone. Um, so, we just got done taking our data, right? And the graduates um, went to the 10th place. So if the graduates went to the 10th place, where do you guess out to? Hundreds. So we should have been guessing out to the hundreds for both D and H. And when you measured the length of the tube, L0, again, everybody's L0 is different because everybody's tube was different. So everybody should have been measuring out to the hundreds. Now, like I said, your life is going to be a lot easier if at this point you just go and change all your decimals over to millimeters. That's what I'm doing right now. So I'm changing it all over to millimeters. And then I'm going to do the same thing for <clears throat> Now I just happened to guess point zero. That doesn't mean you have to guess point zero. Maybe you guess point five. Maybe you guess point two. Oh shoot, what was that last one there, Rachel? Seven, 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 Everybody's depth, the very last measurement is going to be different for everybody. Okay? Because everybody's tube was a different length, not everybody's going to be able to depress it to the same depth. Now volume, we said, is L0 minus H. So here's my L0 in millimeters, and here is my H. So remember when it comes to addition and subtraction, you round to the guess furthest to the left. So if I'm taking 895, Point zero, and I'm subtracting 15.0. Here's my guess, here's my guess. So my guess should be to the place. Eesh, thank you so much. <clears throat> that is two mistakes. So where am I going to round to? Tenths place, because my guess is in the tenths. So I round to the tenths. So my first volume is 880 point zero. And then I continue on and do the rest of them. Okay? So um, make sure that you and your partner right now go and calculate out V. If you did that, then I want you to spend the next 30 seconds meditating on how great you guys work together as a team while I catch up. Or this might be a good time for John to sing his top favorite hits from Cats. Do you have that on your iPod? Of course I do. My mom said once she went to Cats, like the musical, but it was too creepy, so she had to leave. <laughs> What's creepy about cats that are singing and dancing on stage? <laughs> that look strangely human. Some groups are still doing this.
I really want to make sure that everybody agrees. Is everybody ready to move on or no? Allison, you guys ready? Okay, no problem. So the next column is we're going to calculate the pressure inside those tubes. We are changing the depth, therefore we are changing the pressure inside the tube. But we have to calculate the pressure inside the tube. And this is where it gets fun. So um, the pressure inside the small tube is calculated using this following equation. <coughs> Um, now, the pressure that we measured, the atmospheric pressure for today, was 29.96 inches of mercury. So, we have got a couple problems here. First of all, we don't want inches, we want millimeters. The second problem was, when we were measuring our pressure and height in the lab, were we using mercury? No, we were using water because having that much mercury would be dangerous. So we have to mathematically convert our water into mercury by changing the density <coughs> and the difference in the density is 13.55. Mercury is 13.55 times more dense. So. What we're going to do to convert water into mercury is we're going to take D minus H, divide that by 13.55. We're going to add that to the atmospheric pressure minus the water vapor pressure. So let's maybe do the simplest thing first. And let's convert <coughs> inches of mercury into millimeters of mercury. <coughs> So I'm going to do my calculation here. Uh, oh, where are you going to do your calculation? Good question. If you turn the page, it says, in the space below, please show your calculations for converting inches of mercury to millimeters of mercury and for converting the pressure of water in kPa to millimeters of mercury. Okay, so first let's do this. 29.96 inches of mercury. We're going to convert it to millimeters. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert inches into centimeters. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. Yes, I have that memorized. You don't have to. You can if you really want to. So the inches cancel. And then how many millimeters in a centimeter? Okay, now I'm really going to cry, because I heard some people say 100, but it's 10. <laughs> I assume you just wanted to make me cry. Yeah. Okay, good. I wanted it on the video. So, now we calculated it out. And we've got... Metric to metric has infinite sig figs. That's infinite. This one has three, that one has four, so we run to three sig figs. 761 millimeters of mercury. So pretty darn close to um, atmospheric. Atmospheric pressure is 760 at sea level. We're above sea level, so our, the pressure should actually be less but it's a little bit higher today because we have a weather front moving through. So we have a high pressure system moving in. Yes, Eric? Why do you use the same figs for the centimeters? I thought that's an exact that. Nope, that is not. Oh, yeah. Okay. You measured that there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So now I can go back here and we can put 761 in for that. Yeah, we mathematical. Uh, it's uh, yeah. Uh, temperature. 
Uh, Rachel, what was the temperature of your water? 23.9. 23.9, beautiful. <laughs> All right, so on this point right here, we're going to write 23.9, that's our temperature, and we want to find the vapor pressure of water. Because yesterday, I mentioned that, and it says in the directions, that water vapor is not ideal. And for those of you in the Charles Law Lab, those of you who had a hot sink, got really bad results because you had a lot of water vapor. So I'm going to try to draw. Here's my outer cylinder. Here's my inner cylinder. I want to find the pressure inside here, but I want the pressure out the water vapor because we get a little bit of water vapor in here. So what I need to do is I need to subtract out the water vapor pressure. And that's where the equation comes P naught minus my water vapor pressure. So where do we get the water vapor pressure from? Good question. We get it from a vapor pressure table, which is on Appendix O. So we go to Appendix O, and this is when the fun really starts. If you didn't think you were having fun before, now you're really going to have some fun. Because now, right below it, yeah. this is Appendix O, right below it is vapor pressure of water. So, Rachel said that their temperature was 23.9. Hmm, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. There's no 23.9. What are we going to do? We are going to, that's right, interpolate. We're not going to round. We're going to interpolate. Why? Because it's on the, one of the college readiness standards. Isn't that exciting? So basically, uh, we're going to find the exact value. Now, oh. I know this is a cliffhanger, but we're going to have to stop here because we're running out of time. So tomorrow's episode. Tune in tomorrow. To our friends in Poland. The Bronowitz. And tomorrow, we'll be doing interpolation. Don't worry. You can watch this on YouTube. For all my adoring fans out there, this is Mr. Stiles signing off.